Hi everybody. Hope you all are doing well. Uh, so recently I put a post on asking what kind of things you guys would like to see made. And one person mentioned something with vellum, so I thought I would start off with doing that card. So let me just pop back here so I can see. Yo, oh, you got a notification. Well, I'm so glad. And I, there's no face-to-face -face time today because I haven't had a shower today and I look like a hot mess. But anyway. <laughs> so what I wanted to show you first, what I did, we're going to use the music from the heart. So today is actually our wedding anniversary. So I was like, oh, this is kind of a appropriate card. It's a really pretty card. But I wanted to show you something I made for Christian's um, music teacher. First of all, sec first, first and second, let me tell you two different things. I made this for the little post-it note holder with the B paper. So this is actually using the back and the front of the same piece, which I thought was really cute. And then I put it on to um, crushed curry. So it's really simple. Now, if I was uh, smart enough and I actually had the B stamp set, I could put something like, you know, you're so sweet or I'm sure there's something like that in that stamp set. So if you have it, this is a great idea for that. And then just in case you missed it, if you missed it the other day, you just put your post in there and you can actually also fit a pen. So a little Stampin' Up pen. So I... Um, may put this one together with the sample picture that I took. So that was one quick one. And then I made one for Christian's music teacher with the music for my heart. And I thought this was so cute. And this one was really easy because all I did was I just stamped the lines and I stamped some notes on just a piece of whisper white cardstock. Now, one other thing I want to tell you, you have to kind of judge it ahead of time if you do. But what I did on this one, and I did this before and I can't believe I forgot, but what I did was actually assembled this and then I put this inside as opposed to this one where you can see the yellow pieces. I don't know if you can see that in there. So if you are careful and you make sure that your, your paper is accurately measured, which I don't always do, that's why I say be careful, you can actually slide it over and then you can see in this one, you don't even see the little gray flaps because they're actually underneath. But I thought this was really cute. Just a note of thanks. So I'm going to take this up and uh, I don't think he has music class until Thursday. So I'm going to let him give the music teacher this. But I thought it was really nice. So you can put post-its in there. Although it is almost so cute. You don't want to cover up the little piano. I did fussy cut the piano. Only because I thought it's only one card. And then with this one, just a note of thanks. So it's just a note of thanks. These are actually two different stamps. Oh, where are they? <laughs> they're two different stamps, but since they're photopolymer, I used the Stamparatus and I just lined them up right next to each other. So you can see those there. So just a note of thanks. And I just lined them right up. So that kind of worked out really cute. I really, really love this stamp set. And I think it's got a lot of really nice sayings in it, but I thought that was just adorable. So she will get that sometime this week. Which leads me to my card. So I thought, so I'm going to tell you, I did this originally. I did one because someone asked for vellum. So this is vellum. And I know it does kind of stick up. But when you have sheet music that's been played, it does tend to have a little bit of a a, a finger feel to it because you've played it a lot and the ends tend to turn up. So I kind of, and I even made a little mistake up here, but I thought... Long time ago when people were writing symphonies, you know, they had scratched stuff and erased it. If you've ever seen, um, what is that movie that I love? Amadeus. I love that movie. But I thought this was kind of neat because it looked un unique and actually original with just the flipping up paper. So if you wanted to, if this bothered you, you could absolutely, you could glue it down. What I did was I just glued this down with Tombow. Just liquid glue. So I just put a little bit of it and I kind of smeared it. And of course, unfortunately, I didn't wait for my... Um, I used VersaFine for this and I didn't wait for it to dry. So I have some smudgy spots that I've been going back and erasing with my eraser. So that's one thing when you use the VersaFine, you really do need to make sure that you wait for it to actually dry. So I'm going to be a little bit more careful. Now I ended up heat embossing these lines on here. The first time I did it, I just stamped them with what did I use? I used stays on and stays on has really been a doozy for me lately. I don't know if you all noticed this, but with stays on ink, sometimes it really sticks to your paper and it kind of rips it. So I have had that. I'm I'm a little bit mad at stays on. So I started off with stays on and then I thought it would be kind of cool if we did this embossed. So you can see it's got the black embossing powder on it. Now currently, and let me make sure I'm not lying. 
because I feel like we don't have plain black embossing powder in the catalog. I think we only have the sparkle, but my black powder is, I've had it for a little while, so holy lord, nope, it's in there. So there's black embossing powder. So you still can still get this. I'm always afraid if I use a powder and it's not something that you can currently purchase. It makes me feel guilty because I'm like, oh, you can't use it. But if you notice here, this actually is stamped in um, real red. And then I went over to make it a little darker in cherry cobbler. And that is shiny. So I actually embossed this with clear. So if you don't have a specific color of ink, you can always use Versamark. And I'll show you how to do that as well. And then I did end up embossing this in cherry cobbler. So you can see that's got a little shine to it. So it's really pretty. And then all you would have to do is just add your panel to the inside, whatever it is you want to write. But I thought this was a really pretty anniversary card. So we're going to make this. And I think I'm going to do it the same. I did use my Stamparatus. So if you wanted to skip the black heat embossing, you could. So what I think I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to stamp it, just the lines, and then I'm actually going to heat emboss the notes instead. But I want to show you how to be able to do it. So... We're going to grab, so I do still have a piece of cherry cobbler. That will be the base. This is um, four, four and a quarter by 11 and then score it at five and a half. So we'll stick with that for the base. And quite honestly, if you wanted to, even though I know this is a thank you, you could totally, we could make this into a card. So I might make this, instead of it being a post-it holder, I might convert that into a card as well because I thought it turned out really cute. And we could just put like a strip of something in between. So I'm going to cut this down just a little bit smaller than what I did before because this layer is only a sixteenth of an inch bigger. So I'm going to cut this down, the black piece, which you could cut something out from underneath if you wanted to. But I'm going to have this one down to five and a quarter. Is that right? Yeah, five and a quarter by four. Let me just trim this down just a smidge. So this is going to lay on top. And I think it really gives it a nice um, distinction between the white and the black. So that's why I wanted the black one there, especially with the cherry. And then I will get a piece of just regular Whisper White. And I'm going to cut this down to five by three and three quarters. So you all have given me some really good ideas of what you want. So this is five by three and three quarters. And then I'm going to cut a piece of vellum the same. So I have lots of ideas to be able to use. So thank you all to everybody who left a little idea. So this is Stampin' Up! Vellum. Now Stampin' Up! Vellum is not terrifically thick. You could not make a card base out of it, but you still could use it for making cards. So I'm going to cut this down. I feel like I think I cut that piece crooked first because this stuff is a little slippery. So you really have to make sure you hold it. Oops, where you want it. So three and three quarters by five. So that is going to exactly match this white piece here. Okay. So what I, oh, almost, yeah, it's pretty square. <laughs> so what I ended up doing was, let me just put these back because vellum is, I don't know about you, but between vellum and photopolymer stamps, those are the two things that get lost the most in my craft room. <laughs> All right. So what I did for this one specifically, if you are going to emboss on vellum, a couple notes, you need to make sure that you don't hold the heat tool in place for too long because it can really warp or burn and it will leave like a, a yellow mark on your vellum. So you want to be careful with that. You keep it moving the whole time. It's really smart to be able to preheat this because then you don't have to worry about holding it there as long. It does melt rather quickly. So what I did is I got my Stamparatus and I kind of picked a spot, which this is how I tend to do anything when I'm making cards that have a, um, a pattern to them, okay? So, you know, you can move these, you can flip them from side to side. So I kind of picked a spot that I thought, this is even a little bit crooked if you look at it now, it doesn't look super duper straight. But I picked a spot and what in the world? What the heck did I put with my vellum? All right, that quick, I lost it. Jeez, a whiz. And I kind of lined up. So I think I'm going to actually try and fix this just a little bit. Let me see. I'm going to put this here. That way I can kind of line it right on a line. That way I know it's straight. -er. 
All right, let's see where that goes. And you could, if you wanted to, if you have a piece of scrap paper, you could even take like your memento. It doesn't have to be terrifically dark. And you can kind of stamp, especially because you're using vellum. You could stamp where it's going to be. Oops. That's good enough. It doesn't need to be too dark. That way you could say, like, where do you want your line to be? Because when you're lining something up, oh, I already got some glue on there. When you're lining something up with vellum, you can actually see through it. So that's one of the neat things. So I figured if we did this with ink versus the embossing on the line part, you would be able to see through a little bit more. So that's what we're going for. So I'm going to say we're going to start this at 2. Hopefully that's going to work. And ends up where at the corner of it, and I'm going to put my markers on here so I can show you. I'm going to put my magnets, not markers. Where's the other one? So the way I'm lining this up is, is I like to put the corner of the paper down here in the bottom where the corner meets because I think it makes it easier for you to move things when you're lining it up. If you know, like if you were to have to repeat it, you're like, okay, just go right back to the corner. So I'm going to put a piece here, put one here just for the heck of it, and then we're going to ink, and I think I'm just going to stick with the memento for the first time. So I'm just inking up my lines with memento, and when you use the Stamparatus, if you do, worst case scenario, you goof something up. The nice part is if you have it lined up, you can kind of... um go back and re-ink it. So just give it a nice press. It does tend to stick. Yep, see right up there I missed. A little spot. All right, so there's one. One thing you do have to be careful of though is that it does take a little bit of time for anything to dry on vellum. Okay, so just keep that in mind. That is one thing you got to kind of keep in mind. So I'm going to kind of give this like a little bit of a spacing where I think music would be. And then I also wanted to keep the gap in the center. So you see I had like three of them lined up and then two because that way it'll fit in the sentiment underneath. So I'm moving that up one inch. I'm just going to put this here. I'm not going to put one on the top and I'm going to do my best, best to avoid smudging it. We'll see. That's easier said than done with me. I'm like a bull in a china shop when it comes to smudging. Because I was looking at those notes and I thought, where, where is all this black coming from? And then I realized, oh, it's because the ink isn't dry yet. So that VersaFine ink is not an ink that Stampin' Up! sells. However, it is another ink that is made by the same people that make Memento and stays on. And sometimes when you have these photopolymers, you really got to give it a little bit of CPR. Okay, so now... Now's where I'm going to try to be careful. In order to, I'm going to move this up one more time. And then I'm going to try to flip it. So again, I'm kind of lining up with my corner here. Just for the most part, trying to keep it in a straight plane. I really wish we had heavyweight vellum because I would love to be able to make card bases with vellum. And also, sometimes when you emboss on vellum, if you have a heavier weight belt and a heavier weight vellum and emboss, it does kind of uh, hold up a little bit better. So now, obviously, I can't go up any farther. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it. So this is the point where I'm going to say I'm going to try to be careful. So I'm going to go back to my two. So I have the corner lined up at the two-inch mark here, and I'm lined up on the corner here. And I'm going to just put this kind of just below, and I'm actually going to wrap my magnet around with the tape that I have there. I'm going to do it one more time. So this might only have four music bars. I took piano so long ago, I'm ashamed to say I don't remember a lot of the terminology. I know there's treble and clef and I don't really know a whole lot other than that, sadly. I wish now that I would have paid better attention when I was learning piano. Okay, so there's that. Let me see if I can pull this off without ruining it. So this one could have a larger space, which kind of might actually work out because then it'll be a little better of a focus 
for our um, sentiment. So I'm gonna leave this. So we just have the four bars. I'm gonna just take my heat tool. I'm gonna heat it up for a second. I'm gonna try to keep it away so it's not too loud. And I just wanna lightly dry it. Not anything serious, just lightly dry it. Keep it moving. You can switch to the back. All right, so. So now that we're finished with our bars, I'm gonna take this one off because I already have my sentiment on this one, but it's not going to be set up in the correct position. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just put this back up to the top again, just so it sits in the top corner. Oop, smudged it. Dang. All right, and then I'm gonna pick up my sentiment, and this is clean, I did actually clean it. And I'm gonna put this here so I can kind of see where I'd want it. Okay, I'm gonna close this. All right, now I'm gonna pick this up so I don't mess it up anymore and I'm putting this on the side so it dries because the next piece, we're actually gonna stamp this onto the white. So we're gonna just line that in and because these are the exact same pieces, it should line up exactly correct. And I put a black smudge there, let me flip this over. Sometimes I swear, I think I need to wear like gloves while I do stuff because I'm such a messy Marvin. So I did get my new embossing buddy. So the other one I had for about 17 years. <laughs> so since I've gotten the new one, it's definitely not been um, as dusty. I have had like a couple spots, but I kind of think it's just because I'm not prepping it very well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ink this first. And even though my Versamark has lines on it because I did something I shouldn't have, it does not affect what it does to your Versamark pad. So don't worry about that if you see it's stained. This actually was my clean one. You should see what the other one looks like. So I'm inking this with Versamark first to make it sticky. I'm going to go ahead and turn on my heat tool. Then I'm going to ink it with Cherry Cobbler. And then I'm going to close it. Hopefully I'm not going to interrupt. Yep, I'm going to close it and just press. See what it looks like. Everything looks nice. It's all nicely inked. So then I'm going to take my coffee filter, my clear embossing powder, and dump this. Give it a good tap to shake it. Get the excess off. All right, so you can see now it's not wet looking. You can tell it's definitely covered with the powder. Let me just put this away. All right, and then I'm gonna heat this. Same thing again, my heat tool is nice and hot, so you can see it's shiny when it's heated. So I can just move it around quickly, that way it doesn't warp my paper too much. Also kind of hit it from the bottom. All right, so that looks pretty good. So it's shiny all over. So this will be the part that goes onto here. So I can go ahead and assemble this part at this point. Let me just wipe this off so I can move this out of the way. I find that no matter what lately, I never squeeze my um, chamois out enough. <laughs> it's like always too wet. But I think I also don't squeeze it out because I usually leave it um, in here for so long that it probably doesn't get wet as often as it should. All right, so now what I'm going to do, move this to a spot. It's not going to make a mess, is I'm going to put my white panel onto my black panel because it is going to get put on there anyway. It doesn't really make a difference in what order. Okay, so we'll go ahead and take this. And if it bothers you that it's a little bit wiggly, the other thing you can do is you can put it through your um, embossing machine or your die cut machine, I should say. You could put it through with a piece of just white copy paper wrapped around it and just run it through once and it will flatten it out. But it's pretty flat with this black piece. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put this piece onto the cherry cobbler panel. 
And one other funny thing I have to tell you, if you guys watched me the other day on YouTube when I made that little post-it note holder, would you believe that the dingling in me, I found my 2018, 2020, 12 by 12 in color cardstock. I just had it put somewhere different. I found it after the fact. I was so mad at myself, but I still have to order the other paper, but I thought I knew I had some 12 by 12 here somewhere. So this is what your base card's going to look like. I do have a little teeny smudge here. Where's my eraser? I tell you, I am like all thumbs when it comes to this black ink sometimes. So this is what we're going to attach our vellum piece to. Okay, so for now, we're going to bring our vellum piece back out. And I'm going to just wipe this off because I'm done with this part. And if you do use stays on for your ink, if you decide to, you actually can clean this off with a little bit of stays on cleaner, which we do sell. So don't worry about it. And honestly, it doesn't ruin it. But just in case you're you're worried about it, you can clean these plates off with that as well. But mine's just going to end up inky again anyway. So I'm going to pull this off. And now what I have is the notes. So I am going to go ahead and emboss a couple of these. So we'll do that one, that one, that one. And we'll do the little heart one just because I think that's cute. You could even, if you wanted to, you could put this. And this is actually upside down. It's going to go this way. But you could put this on here as well. Just whatever you want to add to it would look cute. Let me go add that too, just for the heck of it. You could even draw in some of your own if you wanted to. So I'm going to grab my stamparatus again pull this off done with that one too all right now what i'm going to do and i'm going to try to be careful when i do this just for the sake of attempting to cut down i'm going to just hit this with my embossing buddy okay because it should kind of also help that black if there's any of it that's not dry to kind of have some powder to dry a little bit but basically what I want to do is just cut down on the static of these notes getting pressed anywhere but exactly where I want them okay so you can see it did pick up a little bit of the ink but it's not gonna impede anything so once again I'm gonna do the same thing I'm gonna go to the bottom because I feel like I do a better job lining this up in the bottom corner if I'm being a hundred percent honest with you which I do always try to be with you guys so I hope you appreciate the fact that I'm not one that's going to tell you something just because I think you're going to want to hear it. I had a Misty just prior to getting the Stamparatus and I think if I probably would not have had the Misty I would have definitely been better at fitting things in if you never used it. So with the Misty I understand people who have had or who do have a Misty it does make it a little bit harder sometimes to use the open format but it's kind of just a matter for me of like kind of figuring out where it was for me to get used to the corners. But I like this a lot because it has the, the ability to be able to flip the, the panels around and you can use different ones for different things. I'm just wiping these off because a couple of them were a little dusty that they didn't want to stick. All right, so what I'm going to do is kind of just decide where do I want some of these notes to be. So remember, our sentiment is going to be in this little blank space in the middle. So I'm going to kind of move the notes around to other spots. So I'm going to put one here. Put this one here. I think I'm going to do this one in red. So I think I'm going to keep this one off for now. One here. And do one there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm closing the door. Sorry, i got to move all this stuff around. It also precariously sat around here. So I'm going to close the door to pick up my stamps. Okay. Now, oop, that one, that little tiny, this one doesn't ever want to stick. This one doesn't like me. Make sure I have that where I want it. So I'm going to put this back here again. Let's see. Mm. 
And I'm hoping I have all these facing the same, the correct direction, because I know sometimes they can go either way. All right, so I'm putting this on one more time. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my heat gun, that way it's nice and warm to go. And then what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna ink this with VersaFine, and then I'm gonna just add black ink on top of it, that way we get a really dark impression. So you could do the same with VersaMark and Memento. You could just use VersaMark if you wanted to, but I'm gonna use the VersaFine. And just gonna stamp, ink these up. The VersaFine is a super wet ink. It stays wet for some time. So I'm just going to close my door and press these. Okay. They all look pretty good. So I'm going to pull this off, grab my coffee filter, take my black powder, and I'm going to just try to stick with being on top of whatever it is. So I'm not just dumping it, whoops, <laughs> over the whole thing. Okay, so that actually looks pretty good. If you have any little spots, just move this over for now. If you have any little spots, I always keep, where is it, my paintbrush. So you could always dust something off if you have something that looks like it went where you didn't want it to go. And this may very well pick up a little bit of these lines because they are just slightly wet, which quite honestly isn't going to cause any big problem. But if this is something that would bother you, you could certainly do it in steps. And I know I'm doing this over top of my other stuff, so I will remember to wipe off my fingers before I start with this. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to just heat this. It'll only take a second because it is really hot. Kind of move it around a little bit to the back just to keep it from getting warped. Making sure it's all shiny. I'm just going to go on the back just to kind of get the opposite bend of the paper. All right. I think that's pretty good. All right, so you can see now it's shiny on there. You can see the reflection, so pretty simple. Let me just wipe off my fingers. So they're kind of dusted with embossing powder. And sometimes embossing powder, because it is a pigment powder, it can um, leave a smudge. So you really want to be careful with your fingers. All right, so there is that. Let me just close this up. Oh, guess what I forgot? The red one. Hold on. Let me just bring my other one over. I'm going to do this in clear just once more. And let me wipe this off. Nice part is because this is a microfiber cloth, it just picks it up. So that kind of works out well. So I'm going to just do the same thing. I'm going to pick these up, flip them around. Okay, I'm going to pop this back here. Where did I say I wanted that? I felt like I wanted it over here, and then I think I put that one in. Might have to change it. I'm going to put it up here in the top. So I'm going to kind of put it, so it's kind of right there. We'll put it so the heart hangs down a little bit. So I'm just going to pick this up. Again, I do have a little bit of ink there, so I'm trying to be careful. Make sure this is all lined up properly. Uh, oh, where 
Where is it? I'm just going to go over this again, just a little with my embossing buddy, just so I don't get any static except right where I want it. I'm going to go ahead and open up my clear, turn this back on one more time, and I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to ink this first. See, there's the gross one. <laughs> ink this with Versamark. Then with Cherry Cobbler. Okay, close it and press. Okay, close this up. Do a quick dump. Looks good, it's all covered. And then just heat this really quickly. Literally just a second. Super quick. So it is a little bit lighter. It's a little bit more pink. And I think I probably didn't clean that one off as well when I did it. But what I did the first time was I actually stamped it just stamping it down in the cherry cobbler and then I ended up going back and embossing it. So this one has two layers of ink and then I put the clear on where this one I just went straight ahead. So we could totally go back and redo this again, but I think it's good enough that I don't want to ruin it by accidentally overdoing it. So now with vellum, you do sometimes have a hard time hiding your adhesive. However, now granted this one was a little bit mucky up top because I messed up the lines, but if you take your combo so I'm going to put it so I want it to be the whole top of it is kind of hooked together so I took my Tombow and I just kind of squiggled some of it on the top and then I just took my finger and I just spread it over the whole top make sure you get to the corners that way it'll be completely adhered and then take your paper and just kind of line it up to the corner where you want it and press and you can't see it at all so then you will have and it does take a moment for it to adhere but you will have your whole top will be stuck and then this is kind of like a little flappy piece like I said a little piece of um, sheet music so I think it looks really, really cute. Now, one other thing, again, like I said before, if you were worried about the fact that this is too floppy for you, what you could do is you could adhere this part and then say you didn't put the black panel on, you could run the whole thing, just wrap it in a piece of printer, copy, whatever paper you want to call it. Just put it so it's sandwiched in between and run it through your um, die cutting machine and it will flatten it back out. But I think it's really cute. And then you have this little peek through sentiment here that you can pop up. So I think I'm going to probably use this one and I'm going to go ahead on the inside and just add something with happy anniversary because I think this is a really pretty card. Very simple, but it also does use some vellum, which I don't know about you all, but sometimes I really love vellum, but I feel like I never know how to put it on something that it ends up being cute. To me, it ends up either being that it looks like I just slapped it on after the fact or it's very obvious looking. I think this one looks really neat though because it's just like a little thin piece of music. So hopefully you all like this card today. I think it was really sweet. I think the second way I did it definitely was not as smudgy. Plus it also lends to be able to see the underneath a little bit better versus doing the emboss. So for this one, remember I embossed this one. These are just the... um. Well, what did we end up using? Memento. This was just Memento ink. This was Memento and then I black heat embossed it. So pretty cards. Again, this one definitely looks a little bit more of like an older authentic music piece. You could absolutely go in if you wanted to. And this is another thing. If you happen to have one of these Versamark pens, you could even go in and add like some little additional music notes or movement marks. I'm not really sure if that's what they're called, but this, I've had this forever. So it's got a finer tip pen 
and then it has a broader tip pen. So you could use this as well if you wanted to add some other stuff and then heat emboss it. I think it turned out super cute. I really, really like this stamp set. Great for anybody that has a musical background. I wonder if, I'm gonna see if I can grab it real quick because I made one, we made another card with this. It actually was a case of a card and I'm gonna do this one as a, a example as well. I'm gonna make that into a card, but let me see if I can grab this. This was a case of a card I did. Did I already put it away? I may have put it away already. And I can't find it. What I'm going to do is I will pull it out. And if I didn't, um, if I don't have it, I'll make another one. We made a really cool case of this where you actually use the guitar with the... Uh, I don't know which one of this is. Is this the treble? I'm not sure. But basically what you do is you take these two pieces and you stamp them together. So for you to look at it like that, and it makes a guitar, just like that. So we stamped that and did some records. It was someone's card that I cased. It was such a cute idea. And then we stamped this all in the background. That part I kind of thought of, I added these parts. So I kind of did like a mashup of part of her card and then I made it a little bit my own. But I think that was a really neat card too. Also you have the little piano there. You have the, uh, the notes the keys of the piano that you could make into something as well, which is what I did for this one. So hopefully this has given you some ideas if you did purchase the stamp set and then you're like, mm, now what do I do with it? And I think one of the nicest parts, like I said, because this is photopolymer, it's really easy to be able to line these up just the note of thanks, the two part, and make it into a one part sentiment that looks really sweet. So thank you all so much for joining and whoever left the vellum comment. I hope that you uh, like this card. I think it's a pretty simple card. I definitely want to try to add some more stuff with vellum in the future, so I will be looking out for some more projects to try. If you'd like to get any of these supplies, you can go to my online store, reachthestamper.stampinup.net, and you can shop 24-7. Also, if you have a really large wish list, why not join my team? Right now, you can get $125 worth of anything from the catalog for $99, plus you get a free stamp set, a mini trimmer, and a 6x6 six six piece of a six by six sampler of DSP, not just one piece, <laughs> but there's no obligation to sell, to host parties, classes, do videos or any of this stuff. You can just get everything that you like at a discount. Thank you guys so very much for watching today. I probably will try to go live tomorrow on YouTube. So if you don't follow me there, you can find me there at Rach the Stamper. And then I will be back here Wednesday at 930 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Facebook. Thank you guys very much for watching and I hope you have an awesome day.